table for my family. Uh, my wife's actually gonna help me pick the resin and help me mix the resin or certainly pick the color. Um, so stay tuned, uh, this is part one. There'll be a part two as well. And as always, this is super in depth, but there'll be more dialogue on the YouTube one. Personally, I don't like a lot of dialogue. So for my patrons, you can just see everything in depth. So when we do this resin pour, we're gonna have resin, when we, we're gonna grind this off once it gets flat. So it's gonna get quite thin in places. It'll be some resin, some uh, wood, natural wood. Uh, there's all different heights. I'm actually balancing this on here to split the difference you can see here. So we're gonna have lovely big section of resin here, no wood at all. Um, quite a lot of resin underneath, but that will be ground off. So I'm also putting some kind of shims underneath where the hollow sections are, just so that um, there's uh, some pieces of wood that goes all the way through, so for flexibility. You've seen me sometimes cut channels. This is quite bowed, so it's not particularly pretty. This is my table, if it was a client's table, I'd spend more time fashioning in some uh, some kind of segments and then I would machine it and etc. But this is an experiment just to see. So just simple shims, um, there's a few different ones. I've used oak because it's going outside but you can pretty much use what you like. And they're just gonna go underneath and fill the gaps. In fact, here it is. Not enough resin in there, is there? Not pigment up. Okay, put, put, put more blue in. Yeah. Turquoise, yeah? Turquoise, yeah. Is it going to run through to this bit? It will. Well, no, actually, yeah, probably might not. Yeah, it will from the very end. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, here it comes. Tomorrow? No, I'm going to keep going and fill it up. What now? Yeah, I will do. I'll call you in a minute if you want. Do you want me to do this similar colour? I'll just get you to come out and check it, yeah? That is perfect colour. Okay, it's going to get I don't deeper. want it mega shiny. Like no, that. so I won't put too much. As in the last side table you did, because that yeah, yeah. is not... Um... Yeah.
Okay, so you can see it kind of worked here. This is the first time I've done it. Uh, trying to save, I couldn't get the mold tight on there. I'm trying to save a lot of waste grinding and dust. So I'm using this foam. This was actually packing foam that come with something else. Put it round. You can see here what's happened. There's like a skin there if I put my chisel in. So when it comes to grinding here, you can see there's just gonna be a little skin of resin and then I'm gonna rip the foam off. We're almost back down to the wood, which was what I was hoping. This is gonna be all sculpted round. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with the foam. So there won't be much here. This will stay, but at the top we want the natural wood. So that is a tiny bit of grinding, which is really successful. I've actually angled in the mold. I do like the table to angle in a bit. So if you angle the mold down, you've got absolutely loads of waste here and loads of grinding. And you can get to see some of what we're gonna hopefully see where the wood's kind of floating. I don't actually think, unfortunately, <coughs> there's enough resin in here for it to be finished. But what I'm gonna do is do a, a, a flattening pass, a very rough flattening pass and see what filling needs to be done. And I'll probably use glass cast three in there.
So as I said before, you mustn't have resin on one side and not the other. So if you have a complete coverage of resin on one side but not on the other, what's gonna happen is the wood is it gonna expand and contract, but the resin side will be fixed and that's when you're gonna get cupping. So the reason I put these slivers of wood underneath is that when I now machine this off, I should expose enough wood to give enough surface area for the thing to generally expand and contract top and bottom and not cut. Okay, so this is perfect, just what I wanted. Almost all of the wood that I inserted underneath is exposed, which means there's a clear line of wood for expansion and contraction. And I also mentioned that on the top, I might need to do a top up for glass cast three. That wasn't the case, we're at 55 mil. I'm looking for a 50 mil table. So I'm almost there On to the finishing. Uh, that's it for this one. Part two is gonna be the finishing and aging the base and the next stage to making this table finished. Thanks so much to all my patrons. I'll speak to you really soon. Okay, so part two. Um, I will update you on Glasscast 50 Plus. I know I mentioned it in one of the um, diaries and one of my updates. Uh, I can't really comment on it until uh, I've had it for a while. I can't see there's going to be any problems with Glasscast 50 Plus and definitely if you're using it yourself and you're in kind of a non-controlled environment, it's definitely better. It stayed much cooler and it cured much slower. Really do not expect this to come away from the wood. I know Easy Composites really well. I spoke to them lots and lots about this new resin. It's just that I know Glasscast 50 and can guarantee the results. I am sure this is going to be just as stable in terms of its bond to the wood and its structured element. Um, it was very, very easy to pour. Polishing was maybe slightly harder because it's, it feels very, very slightly softer um, when you're polishing. But I'm going to come back to that once I've done some more tests and I will update you on it. So if finishing and polishing resin is not your thing, maybe fast forward or wait for the YouTube video. For those who are interested, this is obviously cut up. I've not speeded it up, but basically I spend around about two days on what I would call the rough kind of prep sanding, not the final sanding, which would be the top, but the kind of level you would do the bottom and then the sides and the edges, especially if it's like a wany edge like this and there's bits of resin, it's about two days, so maybe 16 hours.
Okay, unfortunately, we lost the footage of aging the legs, um, which is something you've seen me do in other videos. These are a new basic steel base. Um, the angles are based on one of the wooden trestle bases that I make, um, and this is kind of a steel version. Okay, so as before with the outside tables, and I sometimes do this on other pieces, I'm actually spraying on um, the Heidelberg Toy Safe Food Safe Oil. Now, what that does, it, you get a much thicker coating on there, so for the outside, it's really good. The only kind of downside is that it then feels like it's lacquered, as opposed to polishing the oil in, which gives you that beautiful kind of natural wood finish, but this almost puts like a kind of skin on it, almost like you would if you were spraying a two-pack lacquer but it is still oil and it still can be topped up and eventually once it's fully cured, as you'll see, um, I use my ceramic as the final protection coating. Yellow one, sorry mate, you're right, the yellow one.
I build up about three or four coats um, on the top, maybe one or two, well, two on the bottom, um, and then just let it, it cures really, really quickly, especially on the wood. It takes a little bit longer on the resin, but probably about an hour, um, and you can pick it up and handle it, and then 24 hours it'll be fully cured. As I said, this is actually my table or my family's new outside table. Um, there's another table coming which is actually going to be fully outside, not under this cover that I built. Um, I'm applying quite liberally the ceramic coating. It can be put into the cloth and wiped on. Um, but again, this is outside. It's going to get a lot of wear and tear next to the barbecue. So if you can build up more layers and get a nice even finish, the, the more the better really for the conditions where this table is going to live. <laughs> 